what if you could play a game fast? Most people who had this epiphany jumped around in Womp's Fortress and pretended to be good at the game, while others realized, so that's what I'm gonna do with my life. These people became known as speedrunners, people who try to make a living by playing Mario the fastest. In reality though, it really isn't about going the fastest, or playing the cleanest, or even playing at all. The speedrun is just a backdrop. It's mostly about the engagement between the streamer and the community. World record or personal best runs almost never happen, yet people still tune in to watch the funny guy in the box suffer. The big speed game for quite some time has been Super Mario 64, but its remake Super Mario 64 DS was pretty much forgotten about. I think the Mario 64 speedrunning community had enough on their plate as it was. The added characters bring so much more complexity on their own, not to mention the extra 30 stars. It's been more than 15 years since the DS remake came out, and we're just getting to a point where the original N64 game is solidly optimized. But some fearless souls set out to conquer the DS remake, or at least make an effort to develop strategies and techniques. Speedrunners Speedran and Tassers Tast. TAS, or T-A-S, is an acronym that stands for Total Absence of Skill. No, it stands for Tool Assisted Speedrun. This is basically a single run that's engineered to be perfect, based on routes and strats that are currently known. Every single input is set up so that, when played, Mario will perform the run flawlessly, giving runners an idea of what a perfect run looks like. But new strategies and routes are constantly being discovered, so these TASs are rarely up to date by the time they're finished. They either come out underbaked or stay in development forever. Today, the Super Mario 64 DS speedrunning community is still very small compared to the original N64 community. A smaller community obviously means less runners, and of course the people on the top of the leaderboard are the best, but they're the best of a much smaller sample than the N64 version. The smaller community also means that developments have been slower and runs are less optimized. That can mean that runs look less impressive, but watching a perfectly optimized run can get pretty boring. Runners will basically be doing the same run every day of every week of every month. But tuning into an unoptimized speedrun, you'll get a better variety of routes and strats, depending on the runner and what strats are currently relevant. It also means that runs typically take a whole lot longer. In most games, there are two types of speedruns. Those that require a short burst of consistently good plays back to back over the course of 10 or 20 minutes. And then there are those that require the player to sit on the brink of consciousness for over an hour while they berate themselves with negative comments about their skill. All of this while losing sanity like it's a Bloodborne speedrun. Both long and short runs demand a lot of mental fortitude, since they usually require that you put in the same amount of time either way. But there's something special about watching a really great player go from completely confident to a total mess after an hour and a half of the same run. The final few levels are notorious places to make run-ending slip-ups, especially if you're on pace for a personal best or world record. You're fatigued from performing really well for the last hour, and now you've just got to perform perfectly for another 20 or 30 minutes, and you'll see months of work culminate into a world record. Or you could dive off a cliff in Rainbow Ride and throw it all away. Unfortunately, that's what most people do. In the original Super Mario 64, the 120 star speedrun takes the longest to complete, requiring you to get every single star in the game. As of now, only three runs are faster than one hour and 38 minutes. But with Super Mario 64 DS, it's much worse. As mentioned before, there are a total of 150 stars, and this game is much less optimized. To this day, nobody has been able to get all 150 stars in under 2 hours and 30 minutes. That's an hour longer than the N64 120 star run, which means slip-ups at the end are that much more tragic. But during those two and a half hours, you get to see some really interesting strategies that never appear in the N64 game. The nuance that the extra three characters add alongside the new levels and star placements make these runs so much different from the N64 runs. Yoshi's tongue ability lets him grab stars from a distance, which can allow you to perform something called a star cancel. This lets you skip the collecting animation, and can even let you stay in the level depending on how it's performed. You can also use it by jumping off a cliff to get kicked out of the level much quicker while still collecting the star. Mario and Luigi's movement abilities allow you to perform some pretty cool tricks, skipping huge segments of the level. There's also some really cool routes that you can take that utilize Mario and Luigi's power flower abilities. And Wario... Yeah, I got nothing. You know, Super Mario 64 has been around for over 25 years, and at this point, it's super optimized. There might be a few seconds of undiscovered time saves in some categories, but it's almost all down to the player's skill and luck at this point. That makes it a really good competitive speedrunning game, since it's so consistent. But now it's missing something that I really love about speedrunning, and that's development. I like to hear when a new strategy or route is discovered, because then everyone on Twitch is going to be scrambling to get good at it before anyone else. It's exciting to see everyone's time go down because the whole community is learning more about how to break the record. And I guess that's the main difference. In a way, the N64 version is like a PvP speedrun, while the DS remaster feels more like a PvE speedrun. With the original, it's you against everyone else speedrunning the game. But with the DS version, it's you and everyone else speedrunning against the game. Of course, it's still competitive. You want to be the one with the record. But it really feels like a community effort to optimize the DS version to the point that the original is at. 
I think Super Mario 64 DS speedruns deserve a lot more attention. The amount of room for improvement is really exciting. There will always be a new strat or route to try, and always more to discover. If you like learning about the history of the optimization of Super Mario 64 speedruns, then I would suggest looking into these DS remake speedruns. It's pretty much like a DLC for people interested in Mario 64 speedrunning. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.